Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am Delia, one of your hosts, and I'm here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi. Yes. We are here to talk about mom talk. Yes. We are doubling up. Mm -hmm. um, mom talk, by the way, is Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Mm -hmm. We are talking about, I think, eight girls somewhere in Utah just having a wonderful time. Yep. Popping their pussies. Selling vibrators. Twerking. <laughs> going swinging. to vegas swinging married to gay husbands seems great seems exciting seems riveting so we're gonna get into it but before we do we have to issue you a disclaimer please hide your wife and hide your kids this is a politically incorrect podcast that is also by the way not political yeah at all we say bad words yep we have stupid opinions oh yeah and we're not embarrassed about it no so if you're a sad sunny elf, you might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. Get out of here. But if you're ready to talk about some pregnant Mormon ladies <laughs> and some labiaplasties. Ew, oh, yeah. God, vaginoplasties. Do we have to talk about I that? I want to talk about that a uh, lot. We're going to be talking about that a lot. So if you're ready for that, welcome <laughs> to this dumpster. Yeah, and if you are down with us and all of our labia talk, be oh, sure God. to follow us on <laughs> Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash reality TV cringe. We got so much juicy content up on there. So much. Mm. You gotta check it out. Uh. If you are watching on YouTube, first and foremost, hello. Hi. You look lovely today. Mm. Please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe please subscribe every single thing you do helps us to grow on youtube we're trying to get are we um, we're probably almost at four thousand are almost. we already we're at 3.96 so come on <laughs> take us over it's the so edge close. Dee -dee -dee -doo -doo -dee -dee -doo. the price is right <laughs> yeah Dee -dee -doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. almost there four thousand almost but anything you do helps us in the algorithm so thank you in advance thank you i do have to warn you my voice is kind of crazy yeah i got my husband's man cold unfortunately and so i'm dealing with that and i apologize in advance yeah just disregard yeah all right let's get into it we are starting with season one episode five right i think so yeah five and six we have the book of broken vows uh -huh. and then the first book of sins Ooh. oh so so go to vegas juicy. yeah the first episode we kind of start with the aftermath of macy's um little birthday getaway and whitney mm -hmm. has left the group chat yeah because she hates everybody unsurreptitiously is that a word i mean just mm. like out of the blue just leaves without any warning without talking to anybody in advance she mm -hmm. just pieces out of the group chat and she expects everybody to come running and asking her why whitney where What's did you wrong? go why did you leave but lo and behold Nobody does. No one does. And Wendy's telling us on the camera that she doesn't care. She's like, I didn't do it to get any reaction. Sure. But you did because you're upset that nobody's calling you. And then she's telling her dumb husband, mm -hmm. if one of the other girls left the group chat, I would be calling every day. I'd be texting. I'd be asking them if they were okay. Sure. Nobody's doing that to me. Right. And she's butthurt. She is. And she should stop. Uh, yeah. And she should take a moment uh -huh. and wonder to herself, I wonder why they're not reaching out. Is it something that I'm giving in this group? Am yes. I, is it something I am doing that's yes. causing them to not want to reach out when I'm clearly in pain? <laughs> the answer is yes. What could it be? And then do some self-reflection. Yeah. But she does not have the capacity for any inner insight. No. She's completely vapid. Yep. And translucent. Yeah, 100%. And she doesn't think she did anything wrong. I mean, last week she's sitting there telling Macy, yeah, I would do it again. I would talk shit <laughs> right. behind your back again. And then she cried, though. Yeah, and then she, she cried, cried about it. Yeah, she would. Because she felt like everyone was coming for her. Yeah. Because you suck. And you're talking about everybody to everybody else. Yep. And they're calling you on it. She's a bad person and a bad friend. And she's got bad fashion sense. Oh, my God. What is up with her outfits? I don't know. What is she wearing? I don't know. She likes black and white a lot. It's cringe. It's bad. It's like, you have a gay husband. Like, he should dress you up a little bit better it's pilgrim fashion <laughs> it's really bad it's puritanical it's embarrassing but she has come to know of a party that's coming up that she's not invited to because she left the group chat and it's layla's divorce party mm -hmm. so she's kind of debating like whether or not she's gonna show up she ends up showing up mm -hmm. uninvited in a terrible dress in a horrible dress looking like a pilgrim 
with her gay husband. <laughs> Which, by the way, she made a TikTok just recently mm-hmm. making a joke about the fact that he's gay. I'm sure she was joking because there are people out there, you and me, talking about him being gay, which I cannot confirm nor deny, nor do I wish to. I'm going to confirm. No, you're not. you can't <laughs> confirm. And so she addressed it with a joke? Well, yeah. Like she did some sound or whatever that's like going viral right now about, you know, girls with their little gay husband or whatever. And she did it with her husband. And he apparently didn't know that she was doing it with this sound. And he like pushed her. She's like heavy with child right. in this video and he shoves her like hardcore really because and then he does this like macho thing like no I'm macho i'm not gay in the oh, video my god and everyone's like this ain't it because you know it, she's just like janet from the valley like she's in the comment section mm-hmm. she's seeing what everybody's saying about her you know everybody thinks your husband's gay yeah you know everybody thinks that he was on grinder and not tinder and then you make this video yeah I think she's just trying to poke fun at the fact mm, that people are talking about it. I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, I thought it was weird. So anyway, Whitney left the group chat. She is showing up uninvited to Layla's mm-hmm. divorce party. Then she confronts... Jesse. Jesse. Yes, because when Whitney was getting confronted at Macy's birthday party, Jesse said something like, yeah, it's the general perception of the group Whitney, Mm -hmm. that you sidle up and get close to one person and then you use them for what they can give you. And then as soon as you're done with them, you move on to the next person. Then you talk mad shit about the person you just dumped. That's pretty much how everybody feels. And furthermore, Jesse went on to say, it's like, everybody's talking shit about you. Everybody here has had something to say about you. And Whitney is sitting there shocked. Yeah, You can just see she did not expect to hear this news. She also no. says that she feels like Jesse's taking a perverse little pleasure of telling her this information, this tra- traumatizing information in the middle of this traumatizing. party. Traumatizing. She starts crying. Yeah, of And she course. immediately wants to leave because she doesn't know how to actually use her big girl words mm-hmm. and have a conversation that she's not controlling. Well, and it's so silly because she's like shocked that everyone's talking shit about her. But I'm like, you're literally talking to shit about everybody else. Yeah. So I why mean, are you surprised? If you're going to dish it, you got to take it. Right. She cannot. No, she can't at all because she thinks she's so great. Like, what did I do wrong? Kind of like Cody Brown. I was going to say <laughs> another Mormon that we know and love. Yes. So I did like that Jesse was just so candid and just being like, yeah, um, nobody likes you. <laughs> yeah, we're all talking about you. You that suck. Was really good. Yeah. FYI, you it. suck. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for that episode. I know. There was, was not, not a much. lot going on. Uh-uh. And then we have the next well, one. Well, before what? we go, let's have a little convo about Layla. Now, Layla is the oh, one yeah. who is getting divorced. She is 22 years old. She has never had an orgasm. I know. She is a woman of color uh-huh. in, who is a Mormon. And we've already talked about how fascinating that is religion. to Delia. Mm-hmm. But um, she is uh, an interesting person. And she's super excited about her future and about being a single woman woman even Mm -hmm. though i think she has two children yeah we learned that she married her ex-husband when she was 19 years old so another Mm -hmm. one of these young girls who's just like infiltrated indoctrinated by the culture and then just kind of does what the culture tells them to do Mm -hmm. um i think she's really sweet i want very much for her to break out of the mold of mormonism yeah and the mold of these girls because all of these girls talk like each other act like each other dress like each other like and each i just other. feel her like assimilating mm-hmm. into the borg of these mormon girls and i'm like i want to know you layla yeah i want to know your story i'm not really learning a lot but i'm just saying in season two i would like to platform and center layla more i agree like i actually really liked hearing from her and talking about her backstory like she was mentioning something about like her family she's not she's actually not close with any of them she doesn't talk to any of her family and so that's why she married so young and married into this guy's family because she liked his family and they kind of accepted her but then she realized their relationship was toxic af oh also she had kind of a shotgun wedding because mm-hmm. she got knocked up right. girl even though she ain't having no orgasms the man is yeah oh unfortunately God. that just makes me so angry that's so sad. as a woman of a certain age yeah I mean, but like with young men they don't necessarily know how to give a woman an orgasm that's unfortunate but like learn i mean like get a book isn't it supposed to be better for the man anyway right we explore like i mean what are we doing i just i feel 
really sad for her and also for like a culture that thinks it's okay that men don't need to try hard work hard for the woman's pleasure that's where Demi is based she's uh-huh. like I hope she finds somebody who is concerned about her yes and about what she needs and her emotions and her pleasure and yes like, thank you very much I love that I hope we get to see her like date around and me stuff. too I want to see her journey yeah I just hope she picks a better man than like you know Zach or Dakota well I mean at the end of this party that she's having for her divorce the whitest man who ever existed <laughs> in all of Mormonism <laughs> approaches her because he's got a crush on her and I'm like don't repeat the same pattern don't do it disrupt the pattern yep. get out of the pattern and go and find somebody different or just don't find anybody at all yeah. go to therapy right and learn to love yourself and For find real. out who you are and what is your identity outside of the Borg yep Maybe explore your sexicality a little bit. Get a vibrator. Maybe you should swing a little bit. You have some fun, honey. Have some You're fun. You're young once. I'm for real. God, if I could be 22 years Yolo. old. YOLO. Oh, I would. Girl. Girl, I know. <laughs> a path of destruction. <laughs> a path of destruction. <laughs> for real. There's Sexual some, destruction. There's some holes in this house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we have the next episode, the first book of sins. Yeah. And we have everybody getting their hair done at Jesse's hair salon, Jizz Hair. <laughs> And nobody's heard from Whitney since the divorce party when she tried to make it all about herself when she was crying. No one cur. Nobody curs. Whitney also unfollowed everybody <gasps> in the group on social media. And they're just <laughs> laughing about it. Like it's so Whitney's stupid. making these dramatic statements mm-hmm. and everybody's just like, oh my God, drama queen. We don't care. We're not going to inquire what's going on with you. We don't care. It's so petty and so dramatic. And like Whitney's like, no, I didn't do it as some performative statement. Yes, you did. Of course you did. Of course you did. Girl. So vapid. So annoying. If she's going to be on season two. She is going to be on season two. She just announced that she's going to come back for season two because she's a clout goblin. She has to be on television. She's not a part of Mom Talk. Well, she's going to be part of Mom Talk. She's coming back. She OMG. also wants to be a trad wife. Can we just get to that? And like, trad wife? Yeah. Well, she went to the farm oh, to yeah, see right. all like how people do farms. Yeah. Home She's like, I'm really attracted to the lifestyle, but like, I don't know anything about it. Can you tell me more? I guarantee she's been watching Ballerina Farm on YouTube. 100%. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God, that looks 100%. so fantastic. I want to be the Ballerina Farm. Yes. And that's what she's doing. 1000%. She has no substance. No, nothing at Is all. Is she even there? No. She's soulless. She's not real. <laughs> and then we have um, the vulva painting party to celebrate <sighs> Jesse's labioplasty. I don't need to see that. I realize that many of us here today have vulva <laughs> i realize that we have labia okay we all have our own situation there's happening, nothing wrong with that but i don't want you to paint it no i don't want you to articulate it i don't want to talk i about would it. actually like to pretend that you don't have a vagina <laughs> and that i don't have yeah, I nobody agree. here has any genitals whatsoever i would nothing. prefer to live in a world where we're all ken dolls or barbie dolls yeah but painting your cookie Ugh. Your fat cat, your razor plate. That's the extent of what I want to know. I don't want to know anything else about the color. I don't even color, want to know that. The only reason nothing. I do that is to scandalize I you. know. <laughs> well, because it's funny. It is. But this was weird. I don't want, it. I don't want you and to paint Jessie your vulva. And Jessie was just candidly talking about how loose her pussy lips were. <laughs> so let's get this right. She's getting a labiaplasty. Yeah. Which, as I understand it, is like a portion of her roast beef meat curtains are outside the body and not in and so the doctor's gonna cut them off well it's her labia were saggy they're saggy (laughs) after get saggy i I guess after uh pregnancy i don't know after childbirth i guess for her so she pushed out her babies and parts of her they never tightened back up they never went back in yeah so so she wants cutting it off to get them snipped to make it look nice and tight okay for her husband, I guess. Well, I know that there are women out there who don't like the look of their punani sure. and they want to get a surgical intervention so they feel better about themselves. And I'm 100% in favor of that. I just don't want you to paint it for me, nor do I want you to have a party about it, nor do I want to hear about your, what you refer to as meat curtains. I know. I just it's so really, graphic. I feel like we should get away from that for women. I feel like throughout history, people have just been 
so mocking of our sacred parts. I know. I our agree. genitalia. And no, like, I agree. It's terrible. Like, we don't need women to be doing the same thing. And, and this is like such a housewife's trope now. It like, is. We have the yoni steams. We have Ugh. all this stuff. And now we have labioplasties. Like, all these other girls are going to do the same fucking thing. You know it. I guess. I mean, if they've got some meat curtains I, going on. But not everybody I has that. I mean, I don't have meat curtains. I mean, I don't have I mean, Girl, I don't either. I just like I've had a child, but like my I don't have a prolapsed vulva or anything (laughs) like that. I don't know, girl. I just feel like you shouldn't be talking. You could, but go ahead and talk about it. I'm a boomer. I get it. I'm sure, but I'm just like I don't need to hear about this. See, and I'm like of the philosophy. I'm like just love yourself. Just accept yourself. Yeah, and all your elastic bits. Exactly. Like, there's nothing wrong with you. But whatever. She gets her labiaplasty. She gets a boob job done at the same time. This is like her third fucking boob job. That girl is rich. So I'm she is so rich. providing for her weird ass nerdy husband. Her broke ass husband. Right. She's the breadwinner. She's on Mom Talk. Mm-hmm. So she's making hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars through brand deals. Plus, mm-hmm. she's got her own salon. Yeah. She's tricking out her hair and the hair of everybody else. She's making so much money. She can just be like, I'm going to get my boobs done. I'm going to get my boobs done again. Let's I'm going to cut it. up my uh. vagina. I'm going to put some fucking fillers in my face. Yeah. 31 years old. I know. And I'm like, that's great. I mean, but your husband sounds terrible because he's like bitching about how he can't have sex with her for six weeks. Right. He's like, what about your mouth though? What, what did that your dentist do? say about your mouth? Does that still work? While that's you're healing so from your labiaplasty? That's so fucking nasty. And he's nasty. gross looking. I, he's in such fact, a loser. In fact, all of these men are unattractive. All of them are terrible. I mean, objectively unattractive and you're dealing with women who yes look like each other and are part of a yeah. cookie cutter board kind of plastic situation but their husbands they're all nerdy gross terrible zach affleck looks like gary Busey. I zach forget. affleck looks like skeletor dude <laughs> zach affleck is like a very unattractive unappealing person i know i don't know what jen ever saw in him and all of these men connor dakota connor mm-hmm. Dakota? I mean, Dakota's ew. such a when he Pillsbury took his shirt off, boy. I'm like, ew! He get took that his away shirt off me. at Macy's photo shoot, and I'm like, put that right back on. <laughs> put it right back on. For, I think the only man that's like, fu- okay, is maybe Demi's man, Brett. Yeah, I mean, because he's, he's just, older. Yeah, he's a nondescript middle aged white dude. Boring white guy, yeah. I mean, like, there's nothing going Demi's a goddess. She's gorgeous. These women don't value themselves enough. Putting up with these men, putting up with these Dakotas and these Zacks, I could never. I? Oh, I would be burying bodies, honey. For real. I would be a mass murderer of men. I do not get it. I do not get it at all. And speaking of Dakota, he's a piece of shit. (laughs) We have Taylor talking to her mom about how her and Dakota are like nonstop fighting. Mm -hmm. They call him together to mm-hmm. confront him about how he's acting with Taylor. It's like this whole fucking drama that follows the whole episode. Because Taylor's mad that he lied to her at the beginning of their relationship. He was fucking around and now he's got her pregnant. He's probably doing drugs still. And probably fucking around still. Probably still fucking around. So he doesn't pick up the phone. And Mm-mm. so then her mother, that class act, uh, yeah, says, text him that you're going into labor. Yeah. He'll probably call right away, which she did. does. yeah. And he calls. Yeah, that, that was actually funny. That is so funny. manipulative, though. Totally, but it's kind of great. <laughs> oh, God, I was just like, damn. I mean, but he wasn't going to answer any other way. And she needed an answer, I guess. I don't know. I'm like, girl, you are fucking your whole life up mm-hmm. having a kid with this guy. Yeah, but she didn't marry him. No. And they have since broken up. Yeah. And so she was listening to her intuition, which you got to give her credit for. But is this dope ass loser going to pay her child support? Dope ass? You mean dopey ass? Well, oh yeah, dope yeah. ass. Not dope <laughs> as in cool. Dope as about yeah. that guy. No, he dopey ass. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, make him pay child support. He's even not going to pay anything. Gonna, why? Well, even if he's going to work as a construction at McDonald's worker <laughs> at McDonald's, yeah, garnish those wages, and he's going to have to support that child. Oh my God. Yes, he is a lahooser. He is so lame, and I like Taylor actually. Yeah, Taylor's all right. I mean, she's stupid, though. So fucking dumb. Why are you with him? I mean, the way she tells it when she's talking to Macy, which is, uh, I don't know when we get to that. Macy comes over because she's going to have a conversation with Dakota because Taylor wants Dakota and Macy to hash it out. Mm -hmm. Like, the way he talks about it and Taylor talks about it, like, Dakota fucked a girl. Mm -hmm. Then he spent a week fucking Taylor. And then right after that week, he went to another girl, a different girl, and fucked that girl, too. 
And this guy wants Taylor to be a good Mormon girl. And wants her to be committed to him and marry him. Marry him right away. But like Taylor, why are you with him though? For real. If some guy did me that way, I'd be like, okay, peace out. No way. We're not going to be together. Well, but we didn't have a commitment. Nonetheless, you're banging me for an entire week Mm -hmm. straight. Like there is an implication. There's a suggestion of potential exclusivity. Yeah. And or let's at least talk about it before you start railing some other chick. Right. But he's a dumb he's a dirtbag. man. He's, he's so shit. fucking stupid. It's ugly. And people are on Reddit are actually talking about how they think he's like abusing Taylor or something. Because like she's kind of showing the signs. Like she's like really <clears throat> sad anytime she's talking about him, especially in these episodes. And I'm like, first I thought maybe it's just because she's pregnant. She's hormones and stuff. Like it's a lot. It's a lot what she's going through. But then I'm like, I don't know. The way... He's like attached to her at the hip. Like when they go to Vegas and him and Zach have to be there on the tri- on this girl's trip because mm-hmm. they want to be close to their girls. And both these women, Jen and Taylor, they're like, yeah, well, it's just because they love us too much. Oh, and because I'm 36 weeks pregnant and he wants to be there in case anything happens. Yeah, no, right. Zach and dakota dakota (laughs) sorry yeah nondescript white guy Mm -hmm. number two want to be there because they need to control the situation both of these men are not breadwinners both Mm -hmm. of these men do not fucking work both of these men are living off the teat and the largesse of these women and they presume to go on a girl's trip to vegas and then tell them what they can and cannot do it's wild and all of the girls see it in the group of course all of them are calling it out they're like of course the two most controlling men have to be here on our girls trip because they don't trust their women like all the other men don't give a fuck no go have fun go to chippendales they're like have fun cool i get to watch porn all weekend Mm -hmm. like bye i'm gonna hang out in my house that you're paying for by the way because thanks for that all these men right are broke af living off these girls yes but at least they're going like let them go and have some fun let them have some fun don't give them a hard time for it but like taylor and dakota show up to zach and jen's house because they're all driving to vegas Mm -hmm. together fighting yeah like, Jen shows up, she's crying. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yep. I would be so chagrined, mortified, embarrassed to show up to your house crying about my dumbass husband. Oh, my God. That's crazy to me. And then Dakota shows up and starts fighting with Taylor. In their house. In, in their Zach house. In Jen's house. And he's, like, crying and accusing her of not trusting him and they don't know where they stand. And I'm like, why are you having this public fight in front why of people? Why are we making such a spectacle you of ourselves? You cannot catch me dead doing In front that. of our friends in their home, so much so that they have to walk away, leave their own living room so you guys can continue to fight. That's crazy. Red it's so toxic. Everywhere. And then when they get in the car to go, Dakota is like smart enough to be like, no, baby, I love you. Let me hug it out. I love you so much. All for the camera. It's I love so you wild. Too much. Ew. I love you so much. It's too much that I love you. That's why there's Ew. so many problems. I'm like, oh god. Red flags. Codependent. Toxic. So, so toxic. Yes. And then we get to Vegas, and the guys are there in this hotel room with all the girls and the girls are like can you fucking leave now yeah well actually demi's like we need some rules yeah the rules are y'all can't be here bye no boys allowed go back to the hotel like we're here to have a girl's trip like what the fuck are you doing here in the first place yep and before that i think is when jen has a conversation with zach and is like zach's saying something like i'm gonna play poker and she's like oh really well okay like don't lose all our money i'm giving you twenty five hundred dollars you better not lose it. And then Jen in her talking head is like defending him and being like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to make it seem like he's got a problem or that he's an addict. You know, I just like want him to be responsible with our money. But like, I trust him. He's like a good guy. Mm -hmm. Which means he's got a problem and he's an addict and he gambles away her hard earned money money and then yells at her for going to chippendales well let's get to chippendales so jesse has planned a night out it's macy's birthday is this for macy who i don't don't know i think it's layla Layla. i don't know that's right it was layla's this is for layla like that so jesse has uh procured a party van Mm -hmm. and they head on over to a surprise location which ends up being chippendales and of course jen asked zach previous to this like what would you do if we ended up at like some strip joint and he's like well how would you feel being divorced with two kids 
feel good about that. That's what would happen. Yikes. So threatening their marriage. Mm -hmm. So Jen's already like, oh my God, that could never happen. Um, And I think Taylor is a little concerned also with what Dakota might do if Uh she goes to a strip club. But they get into the Sprinter van, into the party van, and they head over to, you guessed it, Chippendales. Yeah. Which, by the way, is the most vanilla... Nothing burger, it's like whatever striptease, yeah, entertainment show, yeah, available. It's in like Vegas. a group thing, yeah, right? It's, it's like just fun. It's who cares? It's Vegas, and Jen is like so scared. Mm-hmm. Like you can see it on her face. She's like, "Oh fuck, I'm screwed." I think she ends up texting Zach or something to like tell him. Taylor texts Dakota first, yeah, and then she ends up calling Zach. Taylor calls Zach. No. Jen calls Zach. Jen calls Zach. And then she ends up crying mm-hmm. because he's saying on the phone, like, he's yelling at her. We're going to get a fucking divorce. Mm-hmm. And she feels terrible because she hasn't fucking done anything wrong. Mm-hmm. And it's so wild to me because prior to this, when they dropped everybody off at like the hotel or whatever, and Demi was like, okay, no boys allowed, like, bye. The girls are asking the guys, and I think they ask Zach, like, are you going to be okay, like, with whatever we do this weekend? Like, are you going to have a problem? And Zach straight up says to the girls, yeah, she can do whatever she wants. I trust her. But then they go to Chippendales, and Mm -hmm. he fucking screams at her while he's probably at the poker table gambling her money away. Yes, using her money, losing her money. The mendacity. Yeah. I just, I, I can't. Yeah. Like, why terrible. did these women stay with these men? That is the, I think that's the overarching question yeah. that really confounds me. Like, you guys have so much going for you. You have these incredible careers, mm-hmm. this fame. You have these children. You can create any life that you want. Why are you settling for these bum ass dudes? Wh- who treat you like shit. Right. And act like you're being such a terrible wife mm-hmm. by going to some group strip club. Yeah. With these gay guys yeah. on the fucking stage. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I mean, like, most of these strippers are, like, not straight. So, like, right. I, I just, it's wild to me. Yeah. It's so insecure. It's so dumb. I know that there's, like, some clips. I've seen some, but I haven't watched the rest of the episodes. But, like, I know it gets much worse between Zach and Jen. Like, he has sends a huge text to her, I think. And then they have, like, a confrontation. Oh, my God. It becomes, like, a whole thing. Mm-hmm. But I hate Zach and I hate Dakota. I hate them both as well. They're I, I don't like any of the husbands. Well, Me, maybe Demi's husband Brett. is yeah. fine. Yeah. But yeah. all of them are losers. All of them are terrible. Yep. Like really, really terrible. Well, maybe Macy's husband's not terrible. He didn't yeah. care. Yeah. He was like, I trust you. Yeah, go have I fun. Love you. Like, yeah. you're a babe. Just come back to me and suck my dick. Like, it's fine. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that's a real man. But not these other losers. No. And then we had Whitney with her homesteading with horses shitting on the screen i literally fast forwarded it and i'm like (laughs) i shouldn't do this because i'm supposed to recap it but like i'm just not going to watch that it's so contrived yeah she doesn't really care she doesn't know anything about it it's just a waste of time it's just a trend that she's following Mm -hmm. too and it's just another funnel for her to be like i can't believe the girls haven't talked to me well nobody cares about you yeah that's why you're boring yeah ask Mm -hmm. yourself why and you're a bitch Mm -hmm. (laughs) the end (laughs) yeah So we only have two more episodes Okay. after this. So what are we going to cover after we're done? I have no idea. I don't want to just jump into something that we don't feel a passion about. Yeah. Like enjoy around. We have to be excited. So we have to, maybe we'll just not cover anything on the general pod and we'll continue to create, other than Sister Wives, Yeah. continue to create content on Patreon until a show presents itself that we want to cover. Yeah. Makes us excited. Yeah. Want to cover have it. Have you been watching 90 Days? No, but I've been hearing Before all the of the crazy, crazy shit. I watch My Thoughts, of course. Yeah, we love Poe. We love Poe the Potato. Yeah. And she's covering, I think it's Before the 90 Days yeah. with that crazy alien lady. Yeah. And that poor blind Nigerian mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. And then Is that other hoposexual who's somewhere in Southeast Asia <laughs> with gonorrhea. And <sighs> I mean, the, the, the it looks lit. Maybe we should cover that. No, it's well, it's well into the season. Well, already. and the episodes are so they're so long anyway. Long. But I do want to watch it. It does look good. Yeah, I know if people on Patreon have been requesting it because it's just so insane. Yeah, which I mean, Ninety Day Fiance is great for that, but it's yes. also kind of produced sometimes. So yeah, but the first season with new cast members is always to good. Be the very best. Yeah, but yeah, we will cover something. Yeah, we just don't know what it is. You guys, let us know what you let think. us know. Is there anything else that we have to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure 
hope and plead that you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star five. review really helps us grow the pod and we would love to read them so thank you so much we will be back next week to talk sister wives and then to wrap up once and for all the secret lives of mormon wives make sure to join us for that but yeah. until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys <laughs>